I welcome you all for the third lecture in the module 1. In the last class, we started discussion on controllable errors and we completed environmental effects or environmental errors. Now, today we will have discussion on remaining controllable errors. Now, we will discuss what is elastic deformation. Now, during measurement sometimes what happens the operator will apply more pressure on the moving element. So, that the stylus or the jaw moving jaw will compress the workpiece. So, due to this what happens the workpiece gets damaged and also the measuring instrument jaw or anvil gets damaged. So, we will get some uh, errors in the measurement. So, how this can be eliminated? Now, we should have some uh, sensing uh, device to sense the pressure applied pressure for example, ratchet mechanism provided in the micrometer or sometimes dial indicators are provided along with the instrument to sense uh, the measuring pressure. And uh, the overhangs in the setups uh, should be minimized if the part is uh, overhanging. So, because of its own weight the uh, measuring instrument may deflect or uh, the uh, setup may deflect leading to some uh, uh, elastic deformation errors. Now, we should have some kind of uh, uh, adjustment for applying uh, stylus pressure which I have uh, discussed. Sometimes what happens the same measuring instrument may be used to uh, measure uh, different kinds of material like uh, rubber plastic and metallic parts. In that case, single pressure uh, setting will not be enough. So, depending upon the pressure the material that is to be measured, we need to uh, set different uh, settings pressure settings. So, if we have such kind of uh, adjustments in the measuring instrument, it will be always better. And then error due to deflection. Sometimes the work pieces would be very long and we need to support them using uh, supports. Now, in such cases we have to use airy points. Now, you can see this uh, diagram wherein uh, we have a very lengthy work piece. The length of the work piece is L and it is supported at uh, two places, two supports are there. The distance between the supports is D. Now, when we support the long work piece at a distance of d which is known as d where d is equal to 0 0.577 times l where l is the length of the work piece then uh, even though there is deflection of the work piece the end faces will be parallel to each other so that we can uh, take the measurements by using end faces of the work piece if we support at any other distance then ends will not be parallel and uh, when we use the end faces for the measurement uh, we will be getting some error. So, that we can show with the help of a simple diagram I am writing a sketch. So, we have a long work piece like this and then it is supported using two supports like this, but the distance is not equal to 0 0.577 times L where L is the length of the work piece. So, in this case we can see that end faces are not parallel. So, when we use the end faces uh, for measurement in such a situation then there will be measurement errors due to the deflection of work pieces. And so there is another kind of uh, alignment uh, error. Okay, this happens uh, when the measuring instrument and uh, desired dimensions are not properly aligned. So this we can understand by using this uh, by studying this diagram. We have the work piece of some length, which uh, for the length of this uh, work piece is to be measured. We have taken uh, a scale for uh, measuring the length. Now, scale is not properly aligned with the 
work piece. Now, you can understand we can see in the picture that there is a inclination of uh, theta between the measured dimen uh, dimension and the edge of the scale. So, because of this we get a length of L, but actual distance will be L cos theta. So, this is known as cosine error. So, this we can eliminate by proper alignment of the measuring tool with uh, the physical dimension that is to be measured. Now, so under controllable errors we have uh, another error called parallax uh, error. The definition of this we uh, studied when we discussed about uh, metrology terminologies. Now, this error occurs when the pointer on a scale is not observed along a line normal to the scale. Now, what is the remedy for this? So, we should always try to reduce the distance between the pointer and scale, so that this parallax error is minimized. Now, we should always use uh, a base principle of alignment that means, uh, the axis of measurement and the instrument measurement should be always uh, uh, collinear, uh, so that uh, the error due to distortions are eliminated. And then uh, error due to improper instrument selection. So, we can take uh, the example of uh, measurement of a very thin wire of uh, say half millimeter diameter. Now, in order to measure this diameter which is uh, approximately 0.5 millimeter uh, diameter, we should not select uh, a micrometer having a range of uh, 0 to 25 millimeter. If you select instrument having 0 to 25 millimeter, what happens is we are using the, uh, the end portion of the range. So, wherein uh, there will be error will be more. So, it we should always when we select uh, the instrument we should always use the middle portion of the range. Now, if you want to measure 0.5 millimeter diameter wire it is always better we select an instrument having a range of maybe 0 to 3 millimeter or 0 to 5 millimeter if available. So, that the errors are less and then error may occur due to wear also. So, due to the continuous usage of uh, measuring instruments, the measuring surfaces of the instruments are subjected to wear. For example, if you take uh, vernier caliper, the faces of measuring jaws are subjected to wear. Similarly, the anvil face and spindle face of the micrometer, they are subjected to wear. Because of this, uh, we get some error. Now, wherever possible, we should try to adjust the uh, uh, instrument so that uh, the zero th so that the error is uh, made zero otherwise we have to calibrate the instruments and then we should note down what is the error and then when we present the measurement uh, result we should account for this measurement error and many times the measuring instruments uh, come with uh, the tungsten carbide uh, coated uh, surfaces for example in the micrometer anvil surface and spindle surface they are tipped with uh, carbide. So, that the wear is less and the life of the instrument is more. So, that we can observe in this uh, picture this is uh, the spindle. Now, you can see the tip of the spindle is uh, the end of the spindle is uh, tipped with a carbide Now, let us discuss about non controllable errors. So, these are uh, beyond the control of uh, operator and what we need to do is uh, we have to calibrate the instruments and we have to note down what is the error and when we present the measurement data we should account for the error. Otherwise, uh, we should uh, have uh, we should take a new uh, uh, measuring instrument wherein uh, the non controllable errors are very less. Our uh, other uh, remedy is we should calibrate uh, the instruments and uh, then we should use such instruments. Now, first one is uh, scale errors. Now, when we use some instrument if the scale preparation of the instrument itself is uh, wrong 
then uh, we always get uh, the uh, wrong reading this is known as scale error. This can be eliminated only by calibration of that particular instrument. Now, we have another kind of non-controllable error which is known as uh, reading error. This happens because of uh, thickness of the graduation and the line spacing uh, between two divisions. Now, we can uh, study this uh, picture wherein we have a long uh, component whose length is to be measured. We are using a steel rule. Now, you can see the end of the work piece is somewhere here. Now, if we read this uh, scale, the reading is 128.8, the reading is between 128.8 and 128.9, but it is very close to 128.9. So, now what we can the what operators will do he will take uh, a dimension of uh, 128.9 plus or minus 0.1 centimeter so in this case that 0.1 centimeter becomes the reading error now remedy for this is uh, uh, we should uh, use instruments with uh, digital display or we should use a magnifying lens so that uh, we can approximate in a better way so that uh, reading errors are minimized. Now, we have uh, linearity error okay. for a measuring system with uh, linear output the maximum deviation of the output of the measuring instrument from a specified straight line is known as linear error. Now, if you observe this picture, uh, x axis is a true value of the physical quantity and y axis we have measured uh, value and uh, we have a best fit uh, straight line uh, drawn using uh, the end points. Now, other points are laying uh, very close to that and now this gap is known as error caused by non-linearity. So, this best fit line we can always draw by various methods by using uh, end points of the range also by method of uh, least squares uh, to determine best fit line for all the values and other method, method is using uh, a method of least square to determine best fit line which passes through the 0 point. Now, uh, the instrument which is having linearity error we should uh, uh, know what is the amount of uh, linearity error and we should uh, uh, consider this while uh, presenting the measurement data. The other kind of uh, non-controllable error is hysteresis error. So, this is the difference in position between uh, loading and unloading curves. Now, we can observe this picture where, wherein we have uh, a loading curve that means uh, the uh, the measurement is done in the increasing order and similarly in the descending order. Now, this difference is known as hysteresis. Now, how do we find whether there is hysteresis error? So, when the pointer does not return to 0 when the load has been removed, then it indicates that there is uh, some hysteresis error. Now, the causes for this uh, hysteresis error are many. This is may be due to dry friction in the mating parts, moving parts because of the properties of elastic elements also hysteresis error may happen. Also because of presence of internal stresses in the various uh, components of the instruments. This can be reduced by proper heat, heat treatment of various uh, elements of the in, uh, instrument and also by proper stabilization of the various components of the measuring instrument. Then repeatability error. So, this is present in almost all uh, measuring systems. Now, the figure uh, shows uh, the distribution of uh, repeated uh, measurements made on one part by one person using one tester. Now, you can understand that uh, the different uh, measuring points uh, 
will fall like this and we can always uh, measure the mean of this. Okay. And now, the, the gap between the mean line and true value is known as uh, inaccuracy and uh, this gap will be known as uh, repeatability error. So, this indicates uh, there is certain inaccuracy in the measurement system and uh, the spread of the curve illustrates the spread of the curve illustrates the degree of error due to repeatability. So, this can be eliminated by proper uh, calibration of the instrument. Now, let us start the discussion on international unit uh, system. Uh, there are many unit systems like imperial system, metric system and uh, this international unit uh, system is uh, an extension and uh, refinement of uh, the metric uh, system which is more convenient to use when compared to other systems. This provides uh, one basic unit for each physical quantity which are mentioned below. For length the unit is meter and the symbol used is m. Similarly, for mass the unit is kilogram and symbol is kg. So, similarly there are uh, 7 uh, basic units and all of them have uh, uh, units and uh, symbols as shown here. Now, coming to the measurement uh, standards. Now, International Organization for Standardization is responsible for establishing the standards and maintaining the standards and uh, they will also uh, responsible for calibrating the other secondary and uh, tertiary uh, standards by comparing those with the primary standards established by International Organization for Standardization with the help of its various uh, technical committees. Now, there are uh, uh, different kinds of uh, standards like material standard and uh, wavelength uh, standard. Now, under material standards uh, we have uh, line standard and end standard. Now, let us learn what is that line standard and end standard. Now, line is uh, a fundamental physical quantity which plays a major role in our daily life as well as in trade and manufacturing system. The following types of line standards are established. The first one is imperial, imperial standard yard. So, this is uh, a material having uh, 1 inch uh, square cross section and uh, it is made out of branch bar with uh, composition of 82 percent copper, 13 percent tin and 5 percent zinc and the bar is having certain length. Now, two gold plugs are inserted into the bar branch bar as shown in this uh, figure on the neutral axis. Now, on the gold plug there are three lines are engraved. Now, the distance between the center line of left gold plug to the center line of right gold plug is taken as 1 yard. So, this is known as imperial standard yard and this is kept at a temperature of 62 degree Fahrenheit. Now, there is another kind of uh, line standard known as international standard prototype meter. Again, uh, this uh, sketch shows a special uh, cross section is uh, used and uh, the length of length and breadth are 16 millimeters bar 16 millimeters and this represents the neutral axis surface. This surface is at uh, neutral axis and two lines are engraved on 
this surface and the distance between these two lines is taken as 1000 millimeter or 1 meter. Now, what is the material of this bar? It is made out of 90 percent platinum and 10 percent uh, iridium and this is kept at uh, 0 degree centigrade and uh, normal atmospheric pressure. Now, this is taken as uh, 1 meter and it is uh, used for comparing other uh, measurement standards. Now, the second type of uh, material standard is end standard. That means, we have a metallic bar may be of round shape or square shape and uh, the distance between ends, end surfaces of the bar is taken as the standard. And these are uh, more convenient to use when compared to line standard and uh, these are used in the uh, uh, workshop practical for practical measurements in the workshop and in inspection laboratories. The examples are uh, of the end standard or end bar and slip gauge. So, let us try to understand the end bar. These are used for measurement of large size of work. They consist of carbon steel round bars about 20 millimeter in diameter and length is, is varying from 10 millimeter to 1200 millimeter. The they are very they are hardened at the ends up to 800 Vickers hardness and whenever they are supported they are supported using airy points. So, that end surfaces will be always parallel. They are available in uh, different uh, uh, accuracy grades like uh, reference grade, calibration grade, inspection grade and workshop grade. Depending upon the usage appropriate uh, uh, grades are selected. For example, for uh, measurement in the workshop level, the workshop level grades are used. For calibration purpose, calibration grades of end bars are used. These end bars they have uh, threaded ends, so that the two or more number of uh, end bars can be uh, assembled to have uh, required length. Now, second type of uh, end bar uh, or end standard is slip gauge. They are nothing but rectangular blocks of uh, hardened and uh, stabilized high grade steel or zirconium oxide. They have 9 millimeter wide and 30 to 35 millimeter long cross section. The length of the slip gauge is nothing but the dimension which it measures. They are uh, hardened to resist uh, wear and they are stabilized to relieve internal stresses. Stress, stresses. They are made as per IS 2984 1981 and IS 2984 2003 standards. So, different grades of uh, slip gauges are available like triple A grade wherein the very close tolerances are maintained uh, like plus or minus 0 0.05 micrometer. They are used to establish uh, uh, standards and they are used for uh, reference uh, purpose. The second category is uh, double A category or calibration uh, grade, uh, which uses medium tolerance on its length that is plus 0 0.1 micrometer to minus 0 0.05 micrometer. They are used for calibra calibrating uh, uh, the lower grade uh, uh, instruments me measuring instruments and they can also be used for high precision gauging work. And then third grade is A grade or inspection grade wherein uh, wider tolerance is provided on the length of the slip gauge like uh, from 0.15 micrometer to minus 0 0.05 micrometer. They are used as tool room standards for setting other gauging tools. 
The fourth grade is workshop grade or we say B grade wherein the tolerance is uh, wider that is plus 0.25 microns to minus 0.15 microns. They are used as shop standards for precision measurement. Now, we have some uh, photographs here. Uh, this uh, shows uh, the slip gauge set wherein we have uh, various uh, slip gauges of different uh, lengths and then you can see the finish of the slip gauge it is uh, almost uh, mirror finish. Uh, as a lapping work uh, will be carried out on the measuring surface so that it will have very fine uh, finish and uh, very close tolerances can be attained. So, this uh, shows the slip gauge uh, accessories uh, wherein uh, we can have a slip gauge holder you can see the slip gauge holder here and we can assemble the uh, different uh, slip gauges by ringing process we can build uh, the required uh, length of the slip gauge and we can uh, put them in the slip gauge holder and this distance can be used as the standard for the measurement purpose. Now, I am showing uh, a slip gauge uh, set there are different grades of uh, slip gauges are available which we have already discussed and normally uh, we have two types of sets one is a normal set and other one is a special set. In the normal set starting from 1.001 to 100 millimeter there will be totally 45 pieces. In the special set starting from 1.001 to 100 millimeter there will be uh, totally 87 uh, pieces. Now, I am showing a special type of uh, slip cage box. So, wherein uh, we can see the slip cages lens they are starting from 1.001 and they go up to 1.009 in steps of 0 0.001 and then starting from 1.01 to 1.49 up to 1.49 in steps of uh, 0 0.01 we have 49 pieces and then starting from 0.5 and up to 9.5 we have totally 19 pieces in steps of uh, 0.5 and then starting from 10 uh, and up to 100 millimeter in steps of 10 we have uh, uh, 10 pieces and then we have uh, we will be having two slip gauges they are known as uh, wear blocks so in this set uh, they are missing now, I am showing uh, one uh, slip gauge of uh, 80 millimeter length. This is the distance between two measuring surfaces that means, this surface and this surface distance between these two surfaces is 80 millimeter. You can have a look at uh, the measuring surface. So, this is the measuring surface. So, this surface is uh, finished ground hardened stabilized and then lapped we will have uh, almost uh, a mirror like uh, finish. The flatness of uh, the measuring surfaces will be fraction of a micrometer. Parallelism between these two measuring surfaces is also very very important and it is maintained within a fraction of a micrometer. I showed uh, a special type of uh, slip gauge wherein 14 millimeter slip gauge is not available. So, when we want 14 millimeter uh, length slip cage we have to take uh, two slip cages and we have to build them. So, I have taken 9.5 millimeter uh, slip cage and uh, 4.5 millimeter when we combine them we get 14 millimeter uh, slip cage. So, we have to combine the two slip cages by a process called ringing process I will just uh, demonstrate the process the two measuring surfaces should be cleaned uh, properly to remove uh, any dust and uh, oily layer and then we have to 
keep these two slip cages like this perpendicular to each other and we have to slowly move one uh, slip cage over other and then we have to rotate like this. Now, you can see because of the molecular attraction between uh, the two surfaces there will be addition of the slip cages. Now, the distance between this surface and this surface is 14 millimeter. While dismantling the slip cages we have to repeat the same procedure we have to rotate the slip cages like this and then we have to slowly move and then we have to remove it. So, this is a ringing process. So, like this up to third decimal place we can build the slip gauges. Now, I am explaining the slip gauge accessories which are used along with uh, the slip gauge set. Now, this is uh, the slip gauge uh, holder we will be having uh, slip gauge holders in uh, different uh, ranges. For example, the first one is uh, having a range of 0 to 50 millimeter second one is having a range of uh, 0 to 100 millimeter and the third holder is having a range of 100 to 200 millimeter. Now, this is the base you can see the bottom surface of the base. So, at the center it is relieved and only here there will be contact with the surface plate and we can observe that there is a screw here. So, now these two can be assembled using this uh, screw and threaded portion like this. So, that this assembly can be used as height master. Now, how to build the required uh, height? Now, I have taken a 40 millimeter length uh, slip cage and uh, these are the measuring jaws. We can observe the measuring jaw surfaces. This is very finely finished lapped surface and on the other side we have a curved surface. Again this is lapped so that both inner surface as well as outer surface can be used for measurement purpose. Now, I will just show the assembly. So, we have to assemble Again, we have to ring the slip gauge with the measuring jaw. I showed uh, the process of ringing. So, similarly, this should be ringed and then assembly should be put into the holder. The assembly should be put into the holder like this and then we have to tighten. Now, the distance between this surface and this surface is 40 millimeter. Now, this can be used as standard for measurement process. So, if required we can fix this to the base. So, now this assembly can be used for both uh, external measurement that means, we can measure external dimensions as well as if you have a component with a bore. So, for it this can be used for internal measurement also. So, from here to here it can be used for internal measurement. Now, this is a pair of measuring jaw with uh, the dimension 2 millimeter this is uh, the inner surface and uh, this is the outer surface. The distance between the inner surface and the extreme point on the curved surface is 2 millimeter. So, this can be used for both the internal measurement as well as external measurement. And then we have a scriber also. So, we can uh, use this along with the slip gauge for uh, scribing purpose. So, we have another kind of jaw which is having a center point here. This also can be used for scribing purpose. Now, what are the disadvantages of material standards? Sometimes accidentally 
if these standards are damaged then it becomes difficult to remake them particularly the imperial standard and international prototype meter if they are damaged it will be very difficult to uh, re-establish them. And then uh, very accurate uh, lab conditions are to be maintained so that uh, there will not be any dimensional changes. In order to overcome these difficulties uh, wavelength standards are established. So, now meter is uh, defined as the length of path travelled by light in vacuum in 1 upon 2 9 9 7 9 2 4 5 8 second. So, the light used to establish this wavelength standard is iodine helium neon laser at wavelength of 633 nanometer. Now, this is not affected by the environmental conditions. So, this is more convenient uh, to use and uh, can be established easily. Now, there are some uh, subdivision of uh, standards. Material standards are classified into four uh, basic uh, types. The first one is primary standard. This is a material standard which is preserved under uh, very specifically created conditions like uh, 20 degree Celsius. So, one example for this primary standard is international prototype meter. So, this cannot be used for direct application, it will be always used only for comparison with uh, secondary uh, measurement standards. Now, there are uh, secondary standards, they are much like uh, the primary standards uh, with respect to design aspect, material aspect and uh, length aspect. Uh, these are compared with uh, primary standards at uh, regular intervals and if there is any deviation it is recorded. These uh, standards are kept at various places and uh, various uh, countries for occasional comparison with uh, tertiary standards. Now, what are tertiary standards? So, these are used for reference purposes in uh, various laboratories and uh, workshops. They are used for comparison at regular intervals with working standards. And now, working standards, these are physical standards for example, gauge blocks, they are used for checking measuring instruments in the workshop. That means, workshop instruments are calibrated by using these work, working standards. These are, these have traceable relationship to the secondary and primary standards by step by step comparison with higher level standards. Now, let us try to understand the meaning of uh, calibration. Any manufacturing industry will have a goal of uh, producing uh, very good quality products. They want to supply zero defect uh, products to the customers. So, the quality product uh, should fulfill all the requirements of the customer for uh, uh, with respect to functions, with respect to size with respect to looks, ergonomic aspect etcetera and they should have uh, specified dimensions as given by the customer. So, in order to establish or uh, have uh, the specified dimensions, it is very necessary that uh, uh, measurement uh, is to be carried out and uh, one should have uh, good uh, and accurate measuring instruments. Now. <coughs> We discussed in the previous uh, classes that uh, due to continuous use all the instruments are subjected to uh, wear and there will be certain amount of uh, error due to wear. So, at uh, regular uh, intervals the workshop instruments should be should be compared with uh, the equipment placed in the standards room of uh, the plant and then the amount of error should be uh, noted down and if possible. Uh, one should try to eliminate or minimize the error due to wear by making some adjustment. This process is known as calibration. In order to carry out calibration as per set standards, a number of calibration laboratories are established at uh, different uh, levels. 
like uh, the in-house calibration lab which is also known as standards room in a manufacturing plant and then we have uh, professional uh, calibration labs uh, established by measurement uh, experts and then uh, the at the higher level at the national level we have uh, national physical laboratories. Now, in house calibration lab this is uh, set up uh, within a company for calibrating uh, its own uh, workshop uh, measuring uh, instruments very specialized and sophisticated uh, equipments are placed uh, in the calibration lab and uh, the workshop instruments are uh, occasionally calibrated using these sophisticated instruments. Now, what are the functions of calibration or standards room? It should have uh, a temperature of 20 degree Celsius which is as per international standard and they should uh, calibrate uh, the various uh, workshop level uh, instruments at uh, regular intervals or as and when needed and it should check uh, the various inspection gauges, plug gauges etcetera and uh, should uh, also maintain uh, very delicate uh, equipment available in the plant in good condition. Now, the calibration intervals for different uh, instruments are uh, shown here, uh, the one year calipers, height gauges, micrometers, dial gauges they are normally calibrated uh, every 12 months, once in 12 months they are calibrated and similarly slip gauges and uh, dial distal dial gauges they are calibrated once in uh, uh, 3 years and radius masters are calibrated once in 24 months. This is only an example. So, like this each instrument will have uh, its own uh, calibration interval. Now, <coughs> higher uh, level compared to standards room is uh, professional calibration labs. The very experienced uh, people and uh, measurement experts they establish uh, these calibration labs and they run the calibration labs. Uh, they maintain uh, very good quality accurate and precise uh, measuring instruments, sophisticated instruments in the professional calibration labs and uh, these are used uh, to calibrate the equipment of uh, the uh, manufacturing plants. And these uh, professional uh, labs uh, should get accredited by national accreditation board for testing and calibration lab as per NABL norms. In house calibration lab need not have this uh, accreditation. Now, examples of uh, NABL uh, accredited labs uh, in India are uh, the Central Manufacturing Technology Institute uh, situated at Bengaluru. Fluid Control Research Institute established at uh, Palakkad and then uh, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute at uh, Durgapur. So, these are some of the NABL accredited labs in India. Now, let us see what are the calibration facilities available at uh, Mechanical Engineering Research Institute. They have uh, calibration facility like uh, coordinate measuring machine, CNC coordinate measuring machine, ML 10 gold standard laser and then laser aligned meter, internal diameter measuring machines, perthometers, universal profile uh, projectors. So, like this they have uh, different kinds of uh, facilities for calibration purpose. And uh, following uh, types of instruments and gauges can be calibrated at uh, Mechanical Engineering Research Institute. The instruments like micrometers with uh, setting pieces, vernier calipers, height gauges, depth gauges and height ma masters, dial gauges of different kind, straight edges, slip gauges all these types of uh, instruments uh, can be calibrated by using the facility available at uh, Mechanical Engineering research institute. Now, at the highest level in India we have uh, national physical 
laboratory which is situated in New Delhi. So, this is the measurement standards laboratory of India. All the professional calibration labs instruments are calibrated at NPL at uh, regular intervals and they get NABL certification. Now, some of the facilities available at NPL are uh, shown here. Uh, they have uh, length measuring machine with uh, laser interferometer. Uh, they have uh, flick standard calibration with 60 nanometer measurement uncertainty for uh, in house traceability of roundness through laser interferometer and they have uh, 1000 millimeter length measuring machine JIGO interferometer for uh, flatness measurement and then 3D coordinate uh, measuring machine and then they also have gauge block interferometer. Apart from this they have uh, other uh, sophisticated uh, instruments for the purpose of calibration. Now, uh, in this uh, session we discussed uh, about uh, the various uh, kinds of errors, measurement uh, errors and then uh, we also studied about international uh, unit system and various uh, measurement uh, uh, standards like line standard, end standard and wavelength standard and what are the levels of uh, standards like uh, primary standard, secondary standard, tertiary standard and workshop level uh, standards and then uh, we under we try to understand what is the uh, meaning of calibration and how it is uh, carried out and what are the various uh, uh, NABL accredited labs in uh, available in India and what facilities uh, they have uh, for calibration purpose. So, these things we understood in this lecture. Now, uh, uh, we will stop uh, the lecture. Thank you. Yeah.